This audio is brought to you by Muslim Central. Please consider donating to help cover our running costs and future projects by visiting www.muslimcentral.com forward slash donate. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. In this episode of Dealing with Difficulty, we want to talk of a certain relationship. Dealing with difficult parents. Oh, that's a tough one. The reason is, this is the month of Ramadan. You and I know we would love to see a beautiful family unit. But some parents, unfortunately, are too hard, difficult, unreasonable. Sometimes they don't want their children to practice what is pleasing to Allah. I've come across people telling me, I'd like to wear the hijab, my mother is an obstacle. I want to pray, my father doesn't want it. Sometimes I, a person wants to marry and the parents have no reason to say no. If they have a solid reason, I would support the parents. But if they don't have a reason at all and you're making it difficult for your children to get married, we've got a difficulty. How do we deal with these people? Firstly, if you're a parent listening to me, did you hear what we just said? You need to make life beautiful for your children. The world we are going, we are living in right now is such that sin has become easy to commit and to do the right thing. It's people like you making it difficult for your children and for others. Is it? I hope not. Because this is a message to the parents firstly. If you're a parent, People are complaining to say my parents are so difficult and whatever. We will talk about the other relation dealing with difficult children. We're going to talk about that inshallah in these episodes. But today's episode is connected to dealing with difficult parents. Some parents swear and scream and shout and become vulgar. They fight amongst themselves in the presence of their own children. Please do not do that. You are not only uh, throwing dust at the blessing of Allah of these children, but you are actually doing yourself a disservice by disobeying Allah. Honor the fact that you have children by living in a respectable way. Watch your tongue as a parent. You are not allowed to swear. Some mothers keep on using a disclaimer to continue sinning and to continue abusing their own children. What is the disclaimer? They keep on saying, well, heaven lies under my feet. Heaven lies under my feet. You look at those feet, dirty, cracked feet that require pedicure. Astaghfirullah. Astaghfirullah. What I mean is, sometimes these feet that they're talking about themselves have issues. It doesn't mean, Allah says it clearly, and I know some people have raised this with me in the past to say, how could you say this about mothers? No. Mothers have the highest status without a doubt only if they are obedient to Allah. That's what it is. Only if they are telling you to do what is within what Allah wants. The minute they're doing something displeasing to Allah, trust me, they're no longer on that exact level. No. Otherwise, every mother will say, I'm in paradise anyway. What's the point? Let me do what I want. That's, if that's the attitude, Wallahi, that's not right. So all of those who were telling me in a past video, that you know what, how could you say this about mothers? I'm repeating the same thing again to say it's correct. You can't just think I'm a mother so I can do as I want to you. You're just a part of my, you're like a slave. No, it's a responsibility. It's a duty. You're a mother. You owe Allah uprightness first to begin with. To, to, to be able to have that status, you need to be connected with the one who gave you the status. That's Allah. We're not denying a high status, the highest status. I just said that. But you can't abuse your children and swear them, and insult them, and keep on cursing them, and continue to say, I'm blessed, heaven is under my feet, I can do what I want. You're not blessed, you're swearing. You, you need to worry about your own paradise to begin with. So that's a statement, we need to really think about it. But sometimes the children happen to be a little bit unreasonable. Like I said, we're gonna deal with that in another episode. The fathers, sometimes you're never there. Sometimes mothers are never there. And then we want to introduce ourselves in the lives of our children and start dictating the pace when we never existed in their lives for so many years. When you participate in your child's life from day one in a positive way, and one of the biggest ways of participating is the spouse you have who is a co-parent of those children we're talking about. If you respect that person, be patient with them a little bit. Try and honor them. Try and uplift them. 
make them feel like they are the mother or the father of these children. Wallahi, it's one of the biggest favors you can do for those children. Many children who come from broken homes, they struggle later on in life. They struggle because whatever happened in their childhood plays out in different ways later on. When they saw you fighting and not fulfilling their rights, not spending time with them, not talking to them, not engaging in a beautiful way, you were very impatient, then it, it affects them. You were never there. So they went into bad habits and they came out and they sometimes some children are engaged in haram. They want to make it halal, they come to you, but you yourself are engaged in haram. So you don't see the importance of making something halal. So you just tell them, no, it's okay. You, you, you know, we won't talk about it now. I know a case of someone who wanted to marry at the age of 21. And the mother and father says, no, 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 you're too young. But they were wealthy people. They could have helped this child. The child ended up depressed on drugs and later on committed suicide. Why? How could you have had a child who committed suicide when you were the parents in the same house of that child? You didn't even know what the child was going through or you were not bothered. They couldn't even talk to you. How many of us have children who cannot talk to us because as soon as they tell us the reality, we will snap and we will break. We will scream and yell at them and some people become physical and abusive with their own children. How many of us are like this? When we don't even know the reality of the world, we're engrossed and involved in our own things. I tell you what, there are people complaining about their mothers and fathers having affairs openly. And sometimes on the phone, someone sent me an email saying that I saw... My father used my phone and later on on my phone, I saw so many dirty things. What do I do? I have so much of respect for this man that just came crashing. The same applies to mothers. They say my mother's developed a relationship with another guy. What do I do? So dealing with difficulty with these parents. Wallahi, talk to them. My beloved children, speak to your parents without gloves. Tell them, look, you know what? This is where we are. This is what it is. You, it's your duty to Allah to look after us, to be kind, to be to speak in the proper way. Uh, across the globe we are suffering. How can we let that happen in our own houses? Follow what Allah has taught you. Follow the instructions of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Serve your children in a proper way. Nurture them, help them, help them grow, talk to them, help them navigate through their mistakes, through their challenges. The reason is online sometimes they might be struggling. I know of a lot of people blackmailing young girls online and they feel stuck. The fact that they feel stuck means there's something wrong with the family structure. They've got no one to talk to, no one to explain to. Okay, your daughter made a mistake, perhaps. She might have uh, done something wrong online and people are blackmailing her now. You as a parent need to be strong enough and understanding enough that this is my child. Allah gave me this child. What am I going to do to help my own child? That's what your duty is. It's not that you just come up and start yelling and screaming and making matters worse to the degree that they don't even want to tell you what's happening. In fact, they end up committing suicide, astaghfirullah, which is haram anyway. But here we are in this beautiful month of fasting. Let's look at our relationships. My beloved parents, we need to do better. I need to do better with my own children. And you need to do better with your own children. Build a relationship. Speak every day together. Try and have a meal every so often. If you're far, far away for whatever reason, work or what it might be, try and call them on a daily basis. Show a bit of an interest in their lives, especially when they're young. And try and praise them where praise is due. They've done well in school. They've done well in something. In madrasa, they've achieved in tahfil or whatever it might be. Praise them. Because when you only reprimand your children when they've done wrong and never praise them when they've done right, then you have harmed them. You have harmed them. Don't allow that to happen. Make sure that there is holistic growth. We praise them when good comes in their direction or when they've done good and we will admonish them within limits in a respectful, proper way where they've done something wrong and we will guide them. I always say, and I want to end with this, we all need to say at least 10 sentences of kindness towards those whom we are living with on a daily basis. You make that promise and your life will change. So let's hope parents can also do the same and I hope that we can have better homes. أقول قولي هذا وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد.